This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 9, Sequencing Rotations, Grade 8, Module 2. Student outcomes for this lesson. Students learn that sequences of rotations preserve lengths of segments as well as degrees of measures of angles. Students describe a sequence of rigid motions that would map a triangle back to its original position after being rotated around two different centers. The essential question for this lesson when performing a sequence of rotations, what affects the location of the image and under what circumstances? This lesson is to be done before watching the video. So if you have not completed the lesson yet, you will need four quarter sheets of tracing paper. Complete the lesson and then come back and watch the video. This is problem number one. And we're going to rotate triangle ABC D degrees around center D. So I've already drawn the triangle. I'm going to place my pencil tip around D and then I can rotate it D degrees. That means I can choose the degree of rotation. So I'm going to rotate it right there. Then I'm going to draw my image and then I will label that A prime, B prime, C prime. Next, rotate that triangle D degrees around center E. So here I am, and it's not reaching my center, so I'm going to need to draw another figure. I'll go ahead and do that. Here's E. Now I'll rotate it around E D degrees. D degrees means I can rotate it any degrees I choose. Alright, so now I go ahead and trace my figure. You'll probably need to darken that. And it says to label that A double prime B double prime, and C double prime. And then we'll answer the questions C and D. Question C, measure and label the angles. So I've already gone ahead and done that, and I have recorded my angle measures. And then you can see here, the length of CB is four units, and the length of C prime, B prime is also four units. CA is five units, and C prime, A prime is five units, and AB is two units, and A prime, B prime is two units. Then the angles. We have this angle is 21 degrees, and the corresponding angle is also 21 degrees. This obtuse angle is 112 degrees, and this corresponding angle is also 112 degrees. Then this acute angle is 47 degrees, and this corresponding angle is also 47 degrees. Next, I've measured all of the segments and angle measures for triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, and found the segment lengths to be correspondingly equal, and the angle measurements to be correspondingly equal. Question D. How can you explain what you observed in Part C? What statement can you make? All the segment lengths and angle measures have been preserved. We're going to rotate triangle ABC D degrees around center D. So I've already gone ahead and drawn my figure. I'm going to rotate it D degrees. D degrees means that I can choose the amount of degrees that I'm rotated. All right, so I'm going to rotate it there. Then it says, then rotate it D degrees around center E. Okay, point E is right here, so now I'm going to rotate it again. And I'll go ahead and draw the figure. And it says to go ahead and label that A prime, B prime, C prime. So we've got A prime, B 
B prime and C prime. Can a single rotation around center D map ABC back onto ABC? So I'm going to put this back here, and it says a single rotation around center D. So center D is right here, and I'm just going to try and rotate that. And it will come close, but it will not come back to it. Question C. Can a single rotation around center E map A prime, B prime, C prime back onto ABC? So I'm going to return it back here, put my pencil tip on E, and see if I can rotate it back to the original position. And no, it does not. Can you find a center that would map A prime, B prime, C prime onto ABC in one rotation? Right, so let's give that a try. Um, just pick a random point. No. How about closer? Yeah, it's getting close. How about here? Very close. How about here? Close. Hmm, maybe here? Ah, oh, close. Yeah, there is a point. Can you find a point? Uh, no, I cannot find a point. However, there is a point that will map it back onto its original position, and you will be learning how to find that center of rotation for two congruent figures when you're in high school geometry. So the answer is yes, there is one, but I could not find it. This is number three. Rotate triangle ABC 90 degrees counterclockwise around center D. So here's triangle ABC, and here's point D. I've drawn a right angle to help me with that 90 degree rotation. And we are going in a counterclockwise, so there's our 90 degrees. Then rotate it another 90 degrees counterclockwise around the center E. Okay, so center E is right here. And I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise. All right, there we go. And I trace my figure and that's where I ended up. Then question B says to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise around center E. So I'm going to go back to the original spot. And I'm going to rotate around E, and I'm going counterclockwise again, 90 degrees. So here I am. Then it says another 90 degrees counterclockwise around D. So here's D, counterclockwise, and I end up right over here. So now let's take a look at the next question. Question C. What do you notice about the locations of triangle A prime B prime C prime and triangle A double prime B double prime C double prime? Does the order in which you rotate a figure around different centers have an impact on the final location of the figure's image? The images are in different locations. A sequence of rotations around different centers affects the location of the final image. This is number five. Triangle ABC has been rotated around two different centers and its image A prime, B prime, C prime describe a sequence of rigid motions that would map triangle ABC onto A prime, B prime, C prime. So I want you to notice that they say rigid motions. So that includes more than just rotation. That would include a translation a reflection and a rotation or any combination of those. So here is our original and um, you can first try just rotating it. And one of the things that I notice is that I'm going to have to end up rotating it to get the point here. 
but I'm also going to have to slide it. A simple rotation will not work. So what I found is if I first do a slide, and I can either move um, A to A prime, or C to C prime, or B to B prime, I'm going to move the closest one. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a translation. And I'm going to translate along a vector from C to C prime. Okay. So this is vector C, C prime. And I'm going to extend that so that when I move it, it will be along a straight line. So I trace my vector, and then I move it along this vector, moving my starting point to my ending point. So that is step one. Then the next step is that I put my pencil tip on the center of rotation, C prime, and then I rotate it. And that maps my original figure onto the image. So the sequence that I did there, I did a rigid motion. The first thing I did is that I translated along vector C, C prime. And the second thing that I did was a rotation around point C prime. So this is an important concept for number five. In general, after a sequence of rotations around two different centers, an image can be mapped back to its original location by first translating along a vector connecting the corresponding vertices, then rotating around the vertex. In this case, I drew a vector from C to C prime and I translated along that vector. Then I rotated the figure until it was back mapped to its original position. In this lesson you have learned, sequences of rotations have the same properties as a single rotation. A sequence of rotations preserves degrees of measures of angles. A sequence of rotations preserves lengths of segments. The order in which a sequence of rotation around different centers performed matters with respect to the final location of the image of the figure that is rotated. The order in which a sequence of rotations around the same center is performed does not matter. The image of the figure will be in the same location.